What's up, world? So on my stream, I get these common questions. Dogside, why are you using the pus spitter? Dogside, is that a mana core? Why are you using that with God 6? Dogside, what kind of two-hand expo is that? Is that an arcane barb? Where do you find that? Dogside, is that a hamburger you're using? You're kidding, right? Yeah, okay, the last one, I'm kidding. However, in this video, I'm going to show you why the two-hand crossbow is the best weapon you are not using right now on your God 6 Demon Hunter builds. So short little introduction, I've actually gotten rank one on basically every single weapon combination you can think of for God 6 Demon Hunter. In season 21, I got rank one with the Odyssey's End variant. Season 22, I got rank one with Fortress Ballister and Quiver. Uh, season 23, I got rank one with the Mana Core on God 6 Demon Hunter. So I've actually done it all. And out of all the combinations, I always go back to the two hand crossbow and I'm about to tell you why now. Okay. So out of all these three weapons here, I, I, I just pulled a couple of weapons here. We got the arcane barb, we got the demon's demise, and then we got the uh, odyssey's in here. Okay? And out of all the three weapons in general, the two hand expo just hits harder. It hits harder than any other, any other, other weapons. You have to look at not the big damage number, not the 3142 that you see here. You want to look at the damage below that because when you're strafing, the strafe doesn't really necessarily care about the attack speed in terms of the damage of the hunger nails. We'll get to the other part of that later, but let's talk about the damage range here. So as you can see, let's actually put these back to back. We're going to start. Actually, let's do it like this. There we go. So we're going to start with the smallest one first. Okay. So we got the Demon's Demise. I pull out the Primal one. Okay. So if you look at the damage range, 1491 to 2414. Okay. That's a pretty big range, like a good over 900, you know, damage range difference between the two. That's a pretty big gap. Now let's go to the two hand bow and you look at that 1846 to 2998. Now that's an even bigger gap than the one hand or that's, that's over 1100 uh, <laughs> damage range gap, uh, which makes it some crazy in inconsistency there. But if you look at the two hand expo, we have 2558 to 3156. And so that's a much smaller gap, you know, of around what, 600, five, five to 600 roughly. So uh, the gap is considerably smaller than these other two. So not only are you getting a high min damage range you're also getting a higher damage range and the damage is more consistent consistency is actually very important because i'm going to explain what that means for you especially when it comes to speed running so um, if you look at the at this here um the high end on the one hand is the 24 14 so the two hand next bows min damage is higher than the one hand's max damage which is actually kind of hilarious when you think about that um and of course again with the two hand bow obviously a two hand bow has a pretty high max but a really low min. Uh, the min is actually kind of like, you know, not too too far away from the one hand's uh, minimum damage there too as well. So then of course you're going to run with 10% damage on both the, uh, both two handers really. And on the one hander, unless you're wearing a quiver, you would do 10%, but if you're doing wooden, you're probably not gonna do 10% at all, uh, simply just because it's 5% per, per, uh, per expo. So you're kind of losing out a little bit there. Um, this is what makes the two hand uh, crossbow, it, it just, it gets his harder. Now here's the interesting part that I think not a lot of people really take into account, but when we look at the hungry and arrow, especially devouring arrow, you know, you got each consecutive pierce increases the damage of the arrow by 70%. This is important because already the guy six demon hunter build is very inconsistent as we're moving and we're strafing with the breakpoints being very all over the place as we're moving, uh, with the pierces being kind of all over the place. And so you really want your, like the damage you're really doing is really big at the higher end, you know, the, the, the third pierce and like the fourth pierce. Okay. Um, that's where our biggest damage is. So the issue with the other two weapons here that I find is that with the damage range being so large, you don't have time to roll RNG to try to get to the higher damage range of these two weapons. So like there's plenty of chances where basically your third and fourth pierce may roll at the low end of both of these weapons here, meaning that like you're going to get pretty weak damage, you know, overall. Now over the course of like, you know, like a Rift Guardian fight, like in the higher GR, it kind of averages out to its average, but in speeds, you don't have time for that. There is no average. Um, 
when it, when it comes to that, you only get one shot at a decent damage when you're doing speeds or, you know, so you really need to make sure that your low end and your high end are pretty consistent. And you'll notice this, like you, if you put this on and you like, you find one, you wear it, get, get a decent quiver. You will actually feel this. Like it's, 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 it's a noticeable difference. So with that being said, um, you also get one of the better passives. So, um, if you look at the archery bonus, the 8% increased damage for the two hand bow is rather weak because it's additive to your skill damage and also your take So you don't even want to do that. Right. But the crossbow has 50% critical hit damage. That's actually really good for a passive. The one hand crossbow uh, gives you 5% crit chance out of the three. I actually would prefer to have the well critical hit damage because, um, well, who doesn't want to hit harder, right? I mean, you already got crit chance on your quiver. So in the past, trying to recommend quiver builds or builds that use the quiver was pretty hard to do because getting a good quiver was really, really difficult because the, the damage range from 450% to 600%. Um, I mean, you have 150 different <laughs> variations of, you know, what it can roll just for the legendary fix itself. So it's kind of awful trying to get a good quiver. Uh, but now this season with the, you know, craft the primals, you can actually just, um, um, roll a pretty decent one kind of off the bat and you don't even need crazy stash. You know, as long as you got hunger and arrow damage and crit chance for speed farming, you're good to go. If it gets vitality, it's fine. So this season is actually a, quite a bit better, uh, to go for a quiver setup. If that's something that you want to do a uh, few more things I want to note, cause I know you see arcane barb here. I crafted that, um, the Bereza, as people will mention, I'm pretty sure they will, does not work. The two extra pierces does not work with God 1600. And the reason why that is, is because of the quiver. The quiver basically caps you at four pierces. So wearing a Bereza does not give you plus two pierces. If it did do that, uh, the Bereza would be by far the best weapon on God 1600. In fact, it would be competitive with Marauder's Demon Hunter in terms of damage and also pushing on the leaderboard. So you would instantly know if it gave you plus two pierces. Now, I know that it can technically pierce with the strafe, but it has an internal cooldown. So it's very rare that you're going to actually see that actually happen and in the way that you want. So that's not really giving you much of anything. If anything, the Bereza is really good for the freeze effect. Um, and for speeds to kind of help keep your sports up. So uh, if, you, if you want to go that route, that's fine. But the reality is you can use any two hand crossbow you like. So whatever rolls well, you wear. I actually got uh, this little Shannon Bolter here that I use sometimes and like it, 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 it rolled really well. So um, I'm going to use that for my stuff for now on. Moving forward, uh, for those who might be coming from a Fortress build or a Fortress Dawn kind of setup for dual wooding, you might be asking, well, how do you keep up your squirts if you're not wearing Fortress or don't have a shield? Well, you actually have this node here where picking up health gloves grants you a shield for 5% of your maximum health for seven seconds, five max stacks. So if you're speed farming and you're moving pretty quick, you're gonna oftentimes be picking up these globes and these globes are going to give you a shield and having a shield with decent amount of toughness is going to allow you to for the most part to keep up your score stacks so you don't necessarily need a fortress per se to kind of keep up your scores unless you're trying to do higher grs than you're supposed to but if you're speeding with 10 stacks especially with the two hand you know crossbow you're going to just fly through it and it's really not going to really be a big issue for you Last but not least, I know people are going to talk about this too as well, is that with the two hand crossbow, you practically meet the best break point for strafing anyways. So um, if you just have one attack speed roll or you use the enchantress, uh, you can with the attack speed, you can actually reach the nine frame break point with the two hand crossbow, something that you cannot do with any of the other weapon setups, except for Vala when you're pushing and there's, and there's a lot of mobs around, you can kind of force that nine frame break system because of that. But in, in the speed scenario, you're never going to be able to get that situation to happen. So the only way to get to that break point is with a two hand crossbow. So this is why I use the two hand crossbow. Um, let's not talk about the, my setup here. Um, I know you probably want me to talk about it, but, um, this is not the video for it. And I'm not trying to make this too long for you. Uh, you can check me out on my stream. I'll look at my D3 planner for more information on that. I 
urge you to try out the two hand uh, expo and quiver whenever you find any good two hand expo or if you want to to uh, try it yourself with a decent quiver and just let me know what you think. I promise you that you're going to feel a difference and you're going to be like, whoa, I wish I would have tried this before. And you can push with it too as well. I actually just recently got ranked one with one key uh, earlier today with guy six using literally my farm setup. I didn't change any skills at all. I just literally just just put in one key, just did the, the I think it's like a rank one, 141. Guy six clear, one keyed it. Uh, check out the gameplay and I, hopefully I'll see you on a stream or something. You know what? Since, since, since I am using the two-hand crossbow, actually, and I, and I got I, I got the archery passive for more crit damage, I might actually do I might actually put um, wind chill on multi-shot wind chill. Where's the clones coming from? It's my vengeance rune. Don't do it. I'm not suggesting anyone to do it, but it actually freezes them on hit. So it, it, it allows me to not get hit basically. But obviously you don't get the 50% damage reduction. So that's why I don't recommend anyone do it. D4 can't be the end all. So hopefully it is not. Even though obviously I favor the Diablo franchises, obviously. But I also want to make sure that that Diablo doesn't slack off just because, you know, whatever. So PoE needs, you know, PoE 2 needs to be like really good. What are those clones? Uh, they're they're coming from Vengeance. Uh, vengeance from the Shadows. It's the last run of Vengeance. They basically freeze on hit. And they look really cool. Like super cool. Yeah, RNG sucks, man. But good for you, though. Um, <laughs> Hashi. I've been searching for that thing. I think I've got at least 20 hours invested in looking for that damn thing. Yeah, and somebody told me that you can get the entire staff in 20 minutes, and I said, no, there's...
He's got shielding. Uh, a lot going on here. And there's Waller. This is going to be very dangerous once the show ends. They'll eventually die, so I guess this is kind of worth it. Ow, if I don't die first. Perfect. I think yellow took no damage. Well, these arcanes I'm dodging. This might be a one clear rank one guy six demon hunter. <laughs> clear. And, th and this is my farm build. This is not, I didn't even like change my gear or anything. <laughs> 